It's not over. Stop the fight! No! People! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ, I'm the king, kill everyone! All right, guys, welcome back to Broke Bets. Um, coming off a good card, another winning card, plus 1.05 units. Um, that's a four-week winning streak for betting. Um, we also got 10 fights right, which I think a lot of people struggled to get a lot of fights right there. So uh, what's, what's going on, Carson? Yeah, what's going on? A couple uh, underdogs uh, impressed, especially Roy Val. He looked pretty darn good. Good to see him get... Uh, another win yes sir we got a lot of underdogs um first fight of the next card we got bad Jeriel dana versus brady high stand um we're going with dana here um i just think that brady doesn't have enough high level experience yet for a power puncher especially where in the fernie garcia fight he got dropped like immediately on the verge of being knocked out um He's going to face a guy here, I think, with at least a little bit better grappling defense, more power, and it's going to be kind of a scary situation. I, I don't think he has developed that uh, defensive stand-up yet or uh, that and been enough stand-up fights where things could be uh, a little more technical. So I think Dana finds a first-round knockout here. What do you think? Yeah, I like uh, him to find a knockout in the first round as well. I think... Uh if he could just uh, straighten out some of his punches to a little bit more and then come with some more hooks. I mean, he comes a little too hook heavy. Right. Um, but if he can straighten out some of those punches, I like him to, to do find a knockout. Yeah, he's on a two-fight skid. Um, I don't think he's going to get held down if he gets taken down by Brady, but of course, you know, if Brady wins, I would assume it's just going to happen by decision because uh, he really doesn't have a lot of ground and pound. Um, and he probably won't have this. Yeah, he probably won't win many exchanges on the feet, obviously. So, I don't think there's anything else to say here. Badger Dana KO round one. Okay, for the next fight, we have Priscilla Cashuera versus Karina Silva. Um, interesting matchup. It's just that classic uh, striker versus grappler matchup here. Taking Karina Silva in this one. Um, I've just seen Priscilla Cashuera get put on her back a little too much. And uh, she gets up, put on her back here. I think against a submission artist, it's me hard for her to escape. Um, you know, she's gotten submitted by Jillian Robertson, which isn't like a big flaw by any means. A lot of people have, but uh, she got taken down by Gina Mazzani multiple times. Um, and I've seen good form from Karina Silva with her takedowns. I think she dips down to a double leg pretty good, and I think she even has the skills to survive on the feet until she can possibly get it to the ground. Um, obviously, there's just the scare that uh, Cashuera is kind of this, as her name says, the zombie girl. She'll move forward, and that pressure could be a lot for uh, a not very experienced, at least UFC fighter. So, I'm thinking submission. What are you thinking? Yeah, I like that as well. I think uh, Silva should be able to to find a submission early. Um, she tends to finish her fights early in rounds one or two, but uh, yeah, like you said, if zombie can. Uh, um, withstand some of that maybe she could uh win the third round maybe find a knockout but yeah i i do think uh silva will find that submission in one of the first two rounds also uh priscilla cashuera coming down to 125 for her last fight was at 135 could be i think she has missed weight before for the 125 division so it'll be interesting to see if she'll you know how well she'll do there so all right Karina Silva by submission round one. Okay, for the next fight, we have Francis Marshall versus William Gomez. Taking Francis Fire Marshall here, um, I think that this, I think that he is really good. And even if he loses this fight, I think Francis Marshall still has a really bright future in the UFC. Um, he just reminds me exactly of Drew Dober. He has so many of the same qualities. He's got a really good chin. Um, the Rojo fight, he literally ate the punches. The commentary boost kind of going a little crazy. Um, he just didn't even seem phased by anything. Connor Matthews hit him with some big shots. He didn't seem phased, phased by those. And I think he's facing somebody here in William Gomez who isn't very good with his hands, but is very long with his uh, kicking game. But I think the overall grappling advantage 
and just the overall power advantage will be on Marshall's side. I like him to find a knockout here. Yeah, I like uh, Marshall by KO. Um, he does kind of, yeah, like you said, he, he does have a good chin, but he worries me because he leaves his chin up there and it just seems like he's going to get KO'd. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think uh, Gomez will have the, the power to, to crack that chin. Um, yeah, I think Marshall will be physically the stronger man uh, if it goes into those grappling situations. And both these men are pretty young too, so I do think uh, both will, will have a bright future in the UFC. Right. The The one thing that worries me is just uh, similar to how we were just talking about Brady High Stand is that I think that Francis Marshall just needs more time with his stand-up experience. I see a lot of good things that he does, but uh, he still is getting the timing of when the strikes are coming to him and things like that. Um, and, and the reason this fight in the ground game could get interesting is William Gomez is very long, and I have seen pretty good ground skills from him. You know, I haven't really seen him in bottom position a lot in his fights, but I do think that Francis Marshall has an extremely good uh, ground game. I, he, he held top control very easily on Marcelo Rojo. It, it just it looks very natural to him, and I just haven't seen him slow down um, in that super high-paced contender series fight. He's moving forward the whole time, being the pressure fighter, and I just think uh, I think he's going to break down Gomez and we'll find a, a KO in round two. You got a time frame? You think it's round two? Yeah, I mean, that sounds good to me. Um, maybe later round two. Yes, sir. As things start to fade, maybe. All right. Right. Marshall, KO, round two. Okay, we have Mohamed Roid Rage Usman versus Junior Tafa. In this fight, just going with Junior Tafa, I, I, Mohamed Usman is nothing to be going crazy about. Um, for one, he's a bit of an undersized heavyweight um, and is just, you know, too, has too much muscle mass on him for what I think actually most heavyweights should have. And uh, I don't know, he, he slowed down before, you know, losing to Brandon St Sales, that looked like a, it was a pretty horrible performance. Um, he doesn't have great coordination. He's got a decent jab. But, uh, yeah, I think he slows down here. And Junior Taffa, I just think he's going to fight way more loose, find a knockout here. Um, the biggest scare, the biggest question, obviously, that ground game. I, I Honestly, I couldn't find great footage for Junior Taffa other than a lot of his kickboxing matches. And, you know, what I saw is he looks very loose, um, plays with his range a little bit better. And I think that will uh, be the factor here, but not betting on anything on this, of course. And uh, you just don't know what is going to happen with Tafa's ground game either if Usman tests it. So what do you think yeah, here? Yeah, um, definitely staying away from this uh, betting-wise. Uh, I mean, Usman's always... I mean, most heavyweights are pretty much uh, open for a KO. So you saw that in his last one. He really didn't look good in that first round, but then found a KO in round two. Um, Usman's also lost to Dante Mays, and we know how bad he is. Right. So, yeah, I think uh, Junior Taffa will be able to pick him apart at range. And he's 26 years old right now, so, I mean, he's getting better and better every fight. Um, so I do like him to, to find a KO. All right, Junior Taffa, KO, round one. Okay, for the next fight, we have Carol Rosa versus Norma Dumont. Taking Norma Dumont... Um, it's me a very similar style in this fight. I, I think both girls have a very similar style. They clinch up a lot. They have very similar stand up. Um, my takeaway from this fight is uh, whoever kind of gets the takedown and is on top should win the fight if there is a takedown. But it'll secure a whole entire round if there is one. And uh, Norma here, she's the the natural woman's featherweight. She's been there for a while. Uh, Tara Rosa, on the other hand, coming up a weight class. So, um, you know, chicks usually probably perform fine in this situation, but I'll I'll stick with the, the bigger girl here, I think, in Norma. Yep, I uh, like Norma to, uh, to win as well. I think she'll just be uh, stronger in those clinch positions and hopefully be able to uh, out-muscle um, Rosa. Um, I know... I was obviously mad. I bet on Norma against Chasson, but 
um, Chasson uh, kind of dominated. Yeah, it was a split decision, but she kind of dominated that fight. But uh, that loss doesn't look as bad now that, uh, I mean, Chasson was beating Irene Aldana until that uh, upkick to the liver. So. Yeah, Chasson does have, like, that weird lesbian strength that she just, like, lifts people up and... She's not like actually a great fighter. She does no damage, but uh, does have that yeah. Weird she's strength. huge. I think she's like five eleven. Yeah, compared to most of these chicks. Right. Uh, all right. Norma Dumont. I mean, this one probably could be a split, but Norma Dumont by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Ronnie Yaya versus Montel Jackson. Taking Montel Jackson, I'm gonna take him by a knockout. Um. Uh, we'll do first round. Um. Ronnie Yaya getting old, you know, good def- fundamental grappling skills, but uh, Montel Jackson's uh, really good on the ground, and uh, you know has has uh, lost to Ricky Simone and uh, Brett Johns in the UFC, but overall seems to be getting better every fight. The only worry for me would be that Montel wouldn't have enough output, um, you know, versus Julio Arce. I felt like there was moments where he could have easily put the gas on Arce and probably knocked him out, but he never really did so. Um, and I would just expect Jackson to control this stand-up and uh, knock Ronnie out early. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the biggest uh, factor will be Montel Jackson's length. I mean, he has a huge reach advantage here, and I think he'll just be able to uh, poke out that jab and, and win it, win the fight on the feet here and probably find a KO. Yeah, I, I think the jabs that he hit Arce with uh, were actually the ones that knocked him down. So, a good sign. Right. Yeah. Especially, I think Arce is a better striker over Ronnie Yaya. Well, certainly is. And we, um, ju- and we just saw that with um, Rafa Garcia this weekend, where if you just throw out that jab, you, you can pretty much control the striking. Right. And <clears throat> another thing to think about, I mean, Montel in this, in this fight will probably be in top position, even if this does go to the ground, so he's just got to defend the submission. He should win. So, Montel Jackson, right. uh, KO, round one. Okay, for the next fight, we have Ricky Glenn versus Christios Diagos. Um, taking Ricky Glenn here, um, I'm just not convinced of the chin of uh, Christios uh, Diagos here. I just think that. Uh, He's been stunned before. You know, Armin obviously had a really good punch on him, but uh, he's been hurt in a lot of fights before, and I think that's something people probably won't see on the Tapology record. But he gets stunned, and his uh, reaction to punches isn't that great. I, I see a knockout here for Ricky Glenn, um, especially being a really big guy. You know, he's really tall for this division. Um, I think Diagos works his way into range, and it's uh, flatlined. What do you think here? Yeah, I think uh, Ricky Glenn put up a decent performance against uh, Grant Dawson, and then the one before that against uh, Silva. He like he had a really nice uh, uh, knockout in that one. He had like a straight left and knocked him down, and then he followed up with an uppercut and uh, KO'd him. So um, I think he has sneaky power if he's uh, throwing those straight punches. So I, yeah, I do like him to find a KO. Yeah, and some other things to think about. I think that uh, Chris Jos Diagos' way to victory with most of his fights is taking people's backs. Um, you know, he likes to wrestle and then work your way to work his way to the back and then try to take the win from there. But uh, you know, his striking is nothing special. Um, and I think that Ricky Glenn, just as you're saying with the Grant Dawson fight, he actually showed very good takedown defense for what Grant Dawson's been able to do to a lot of people. Like Dawson just been ragged on people, and uh, he stopped a lot of those takedowns. Um, and even when he got in bottom position, you know he survived the next round, defended more takedowns, and then started to do better as the fight went on. Um, I think he's and also Glenn had a ten eight in the third round against Dawson. Right, and uh, I think his gas tanks can be better as well. So um, I see Ricky Glenn controlling this fight, and. Uh, uh, Maybe not a first round knockout as we as I think, but uh, it'll it uh, it'll be a knockout I'm sure. So, Ricky Glenn KO round one. Okay, for the next fight we have Jeremiah Wells versus Matt Semmelsberger, taking the se- semi the Jedi Matt Semmelsberger here. Um, Jeremiah Wells, you know, has very good attributes in his grappling. 
and has that kind of crazy power, but uh, Matt Semmelsberger has a really good chin, man. Uh, this guy survived uh, some killers. He survived uh, Chaos Williams. Um, AJ Fletcher isn't the hardest hitter, but certainly does hit hard. Um, and Jake just completely outstruck and knocked down Jake Matthews many times. And uh, Matt Semmelsberger's right hand is an absolute piston. Jake Matthews, who has very good footwork and circles the fence well, just got clobbered by it. And uh, for someone like Jeremiah Wells, who is kind of just a first-round fighter, you know, I think all of his wins are by finish. You might have to uh, fact-check me on that. but um, Yeah, all of his UFC wins. Uh, there's some 2018 wins and uh, CES. There were a couple of decisions there. I just see Jeremiah Wells here fading um, if he can't get this finish in the first round, and I see Matt Semmelsberger knocking him out in round two. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean Semmelsberger put on a really great performance against Jake Matthews, so I do like that uh, recent victory from him. Um, I think he, yeah, like you said, I think he'll be able to uh, push the pace, and if it goes. Out of round one, I think uh, he can turn it on in round two and, and find a KO. Yeah, I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm feeling feeling good about betting Semmelsberger. I haven't pulled the trigger yet, kind of waiting to see what the line will do. But uh, I just see Semmelsberger controlling this fight. And, uh, um, you know, Jeremiah Wells might start really fast with a uh, uh, takedown and maybe some ground control. But as soon as that round two starts, you know, he's 36 years old. Um, uses almost all of his strength and his output and his strikes. I mean, clearly for his, uh, you know, Court McGee fight and uh, Worley Alves fight. But uh, I see the Jedi, some of the Jedi, dropping that right hand right down the middle and uh, winning by knockout here. And I do like even a knockout prop uh, for this fight. So uh, Matt Semmelsberger, KO, round two. Next fight, we got Isman Lucindo versus Brogan Walker taking Isman by a knockout. Um, I think that this girl's just got incredibly good hands. I, I see a second round knockout here. Um, you watch that uh, fight she had with uh, Yasmin Jaguri, or however you say her last name. Um, and that girl is on the up and up. Um, Lucindo was able to eat all of her punches and actually give. Um, uh, Yasmin some trouble with uh, even some of the stand up and I think that in this situation uh, Isman eats all the big punches Brogan Walker hasn't really fought the best of competition um, and we're looking at a 21 year old who's in my opinion on the up and up definitely give me a prospect in this division versus Brogan Walker coming off of tough kind of an embarrassing loss versus Juliana Miller Miller so, uh, what do you think here? Yeah, and we just saw Miller look uh, horrible in her last fight against uh, Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, Miller. Like you said. Or yeah. Yeah, yeah, for Miller. I'm saying, uh, yeah, Isman, she looked incredible in that fight with Yasmin. That was fight of the night on that card, I believe. Um, incredible fight. She has a tough chin. It's hard, too. She was delivering some incredible, incredible strikes. And only 21, so, yeah, I like her a lot to win this fight. Yeah, she's got the speed and the volume, I think, for the striking. And then Brogan Walker, um, you know, she's okay everywhere, but horrible fight IQ, absolutely horrible fight IQ in her Juliana Miller fight. Um, you know, only way for Juliana Miller to win that fight was by takedowns, and Walker kept on initiating clinches and then getting taken down from the clinch. So, uh not the brightest fighter. Maybe it's just a a one write off, but for women's MMA, I think these things repeat themselves. So Lucindo, KO, round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Bobby Green versus Jared Gordon. Bobby Green's gonna fuck him up. He's gonna fuck him up real bad. Um I think this is gonna be easy money, Bobby Green, KO in the first round. Um I already have 2.5 units tied, tied to Bobby Green here. I have him with uh, Francis Marshall for one unit, and then I have Bobby Green with um, 
Montel Jacks for one point one point five units. And uh Bobby I mean the Drew Dober fight was completely outclassing him up until that punch. And then something else I actually like about this fight for Robbie Green is that he didn't even go out he did go, fall really hard versus Drew Dober, but he wasn't out cold. Like he got up a second later and kind of was like still had his wits about. So um kind of a good sign for somebody especially when he's facing someone like Jared Gordon, who in my idea or my mind is not really like a heavy hitter by any means a bit of as pillow hands. Like he hit Patty Pimblett well, but that's Patty Pimblett. Um, hitting Bobby Green's me a whole lot harder. And, uh, yeah, I think Bobby Green fucking peppers him up here. What do you think? Yeah. Um, Bobby Green coming off that, that KO four months ago or however long ago that was, I uh, the only worry would be like a power power puncher, but don't really see that here in Jared Gordon. So, yeah, I mean, maybe Bobby Green comes out a little gun shy just from being KO'd like that. But um, I think he's got yeah, a cocky I, enough I, style that like he yeah, he loves to talk. Yeah, I don't so. see it. And uh, yeah, exactly. Jared Gordon, like his way to win fights is wrestling, and when that's kind <laughs> of taken away. Like, Bobby Green is not going to sit in bottom position, or uh, he's got a good enough, you know, wrestling game to stay out of that those bad positions. And he's going to be the bigger guy as well. So, um, again, I I don't know. Bobby Green's minus 300. I think he should be, like, minus 600 in my eyes. So, I bet a lot on him. Um, and I might even look at his uh, knockout prop, because I think it's going to be pretty pretty nice still. Yeah, he, he tends to win by uh, a decision, so... Maybe that line will be juicy for a KO. We'll see. Bobby Green, KO, round one. Another KO. We're doing a lot of KOs. Okay, for the next fight, we have Brad Tavares versus Bruno Silva. Taking Brad Tavares by decision here. Um, I just think the way Bruno Silva's last fight went down, I can't have anything to do with this guy. Uh, You know, his striking looked awful. He was winging punches. Um... Look how easy it was for Joe Pfeiffer to hit, or Pfeiffer to hit uh, Gerald Mearshart. And then look how impossible it was for uh, Bruno Silva to even touch him. Um, And he gassed out just from missing punches and one grappling exchange. I know he has that weird performance with Alex Pereira where he survived to a decision, but uh, overall, Brad Tavares had the experience. I think he's going to be a better point fighter in this situation. He wins a decision here. Yeah, I don't know what to think about this. Um, can't get a read on Bruno Silva. I mean, he looks to, uh, puts up a good fight against Alex Pereira and probably wins one of the rounds and then looks like an absolute idiot against uh, GM3. Maybe that's the, the threat of the takedown there, but uh, yeah, man, I can't trust that guy after that. After that last performance, he looked god awful. So, Tavares win, wins it on the cards here. Yeah, I think uh, the range in this fight from Bruno Silva is limited too, because uh, I think Tavares got the better gas tank, better experienced. He's got a really good chin. I know he's gotten knocked out before by Shabazian or Rob Whitaker, but he ate a lot of big punches from Duplessis. Um, he was faced Izzy. Um, he just needs more output. And uh, overall, I think he's just got the better takedown defense if Bruno Silva looks for that as a route to win. So, uh, yeah, Tavares takes this one to a decision here. Okay, for the next fight, we have Sonya Dawn versus Ricky Simone. Very good matchup in the bantamweight division. Um, I'm taking Sonya Dawn, though. Um, he's just been... Uh, I mean, both these guys have fought a lot of phenomenal fighters. Obviously, Ricky more on the, the streak here, but... Uh, I think Song's boxing is just to me a, a level above uh, Ricky Simone, and he's going to do more damage in this fight. Um, I could see Ricky getting the the grappling on, on the fence, kind of, and winning some position battles. But overall, slicker boxing, a lot of power. You know, Ricky Simone got uh, knocked out, I guess, a long time ago by uh, the California kid Uriah Faber. I think that Sonya Dawn finds a nice good strike in here, and I like another knockout. I'm going to say in the second round. What do you think? Yeah, and I believe uh, 
Song Yudong does train with Uriah Faber, so he could have a Team little Alpha Male. more insight than most um, when it comes to preparing for Ricky Simone. Um, but yeah, like you said, I do uh, do like uh, Yudong. Is it Song Yudong or Yudong Song to to win it uh, on the feet here? Um, if he can avoid avoid the grappling, um, he should be able to uh, to win it on the feet here. Yeah, um, I also think that you know Ricky. Something that makes him good fighting a lot of people is the threat of the takedown. And Jack Shore was actually winning a lot of parts of that fight up until um, his really good counter he pulled on Shore. But overall, like even against Rafael Sunsau, the the wrestling kind of sets up the big shots. Um, the stare for this fight would be that Sonya Dunn does does a lot of the high guard, like Piotr Jan, hands right above his face, elbows high, and that could lead to takedown shot opportunities for Ricky Simone. I just think uh, Sonya Dunn has got to keep his hands a little bit lower um, and uh, move forward and, and pressure Ricky. I think Ricky could fold under a lot of pressure here. And at 25 years old, with uh, the UFC fights that this guy has under his belt, you know, Kyler Phillips, Casey Kennedy, uh, Julio Arce, Marais, uh, Sanhagen, uh, and that doesn't even include Cheeto on that last five list. So. Cheeto, right. Um, and every time you look at his losses, even, he doesn't even get dominated in his losses. He, he like, wins rounds, so that's always a good sign. Um, and, you know, we just saw this last event. Um wrestling without damage the judges are putting less attention towards it every week and uh <clears throat> ricky simone doesn't really do much damage with his grappling if he if he gets down there he's gonna need to do something because uh sonny don could get knockdowns in this fight and he's got a really good chin as well so i see it a hard i have a hard time seeing ricky simone finishing sonny don here and uh i like that boxing man i like that uh young kids boxing Anything else you got? No, sir. Son Yudong, KO, round two. Okay, for the next fight, we got Sergi Pavlovich versus Curtis Blades. And guys, please drop a like, a comment, subscribe. Um, again, four-week winning streak betting, uh, ten fights right. We went really high on the topology, correct, for how many fights we got correct and how we got them correct. So, uh, um, of course subscribe um but for this fight we got of course these two guys main event probably doesn't need to be a main event because this fight is not going all five rounds and i'm taking curtis blades here um and i think it's an end in a knockout what do you think in this fight yeah i think uh pavlovich uh one weakness we've seen so far is uh on the ground and being able to get taken down um over him exposed him there and that was Pavlovich's one loss. Um, he does have incredible power, though. So, I mean, may, maybe he does find a knockout. I don't know. But uh, in his last fight against Ty and Derek Lewis, even, I mean, he knocked it, he knocked down Ty with a jab. So, I mean, if he can find find the right button on, on Blades, he could find a knockout, too. But... Uh, I do like the chances for, for Blades to be able to uh, take down Pavlovich. And win. Yeah, and Ty's face in that fight, I mean, he got knocked out, but, like, it was a total of five punches, and his face was busted up real bad. Um, yeah, <clears throat> and, like, Pavlovich doesn't, like, swing for the fences with a bunch of crazy hooks. He'll yeah. PC up, jab, straight, jab, straight. And he's got that giant reach, um, huge fucking torso and stuff, but... Uh, <clears throat> we're in the apex folks and uh i think grapplers do better in the apex especially where curtis could close distance obviously it's scary as hell like uh and he might have that fear component you know he shot that takedown on Derek lewis and flatlined um not sure if that plays out the same but um i think blades also is an improved striker where he showed they can hold his own and I hope he doesn't sit on the feet and just let that happen because uh, I think Pavlovich will find a devastating knockout if Blades feels too confident here. You know, you knocking out 
uh, Junior Dos Santos because there's the threat of the takedown. Impressive, but it's not like your trademark. And then knocking out Chris Dawkins because, you know, Chris Dawkins is a super light heavyweight. Uh, that came out wrong. He's a lighter heavyweight fighter. There we go. Um, I don't think it's anything to be super confident about here. And, uh, yeah, with uh, the way that Pavlovich just gave up, gave up against uh, Alistair Overeem, and it only took maybe 45 seconds from when Pavlovich got to the ground to get finished. So Overeem's not even as big as Curtis Blades. And uh, I mean, he's probably on roids, though, too, so got to take that into account. I don't think he was on the horse meet at that time, but not anymore. But uh, <clears throat> Curtis once, Blades. Once you're on him, you're never off of him. Yeah, Curtis Blades, Sergey Pavlovich, like I said, that huge torso. When he got stuck on his back, he had no way out. It looked like he didn't even try to do anything to get up. Um, I think that he gets down. Razor Blades, you know, he's got that new arm tattoo or whatever. The the blade, maybe he wants to show that off a little bit. He'll drop some elbows. <clears throat> Find a KO in the second round when Pavlovich is dead tired. And uh, Yeah, um... Another thing to note, Pavlovich in the UFC, all of his fights have been uh, round one KOs. Um, all of them wins except for that over him one, which is first. Here's the prop to play for this fight. Um, if you're looking at fight doesn't start round whatever, fight doesn't do this, or fight doesn't go the distance, um, just play the fight ends and knockout because you're going to get a huge jump on those odds because it to not go the distance would be like minus 1,000 probably. That'll get pushed down to, like, minus 500 if you just do fight ends and KO. So something easy to tie onto it. I know Curtis Blades has gone to decision multiple times, but uh, um, overall, I think Pavlovich, you know, he hasn't gone the distance in a three-round fight, let alone uh, he shouldn't with uh, Blades in a five-round five, five round fight. So anything else you got? Yeah, and the winner here should uh, fight for the belt, but they're going to have Stipe get knocked out uh early in that fight so i just i i agree but i don't even know in the timeline it would be like two and a half years from now before the next person would even get their title shot with the the way the heavyweight division works so all right uh curtis blades ko round two okay guys to recap the last event holloway versus allen um another positive week like we said um, let's see if I can pull this up. Stats uh, up. You can see up here 10 units on the year almost. And uh, four-week winning streak. Um, in this fight, though, or in this card, plus 1.05 units. And uh, starting off, Bill Algio in a firefight, but we trusted his chin and his cardio. And he just made it work. He dropped TJ Brown, got the win, just had to trust him there. Um, Max Holloway. I mean, had a great promo at the end there. Oh man, I thought that was hilarious. Yes. Bud Light drinking. Fuck you, Kansas City. <laughs> that was funny. Um, <laughs> Dalai Lama licking. <laughs> um, Max Holloway for the next bet. Pretty easy bet, you know. Arnold Allen still impressed me with a lot of the stuff he did. You know, he's got a lot of power. Um, and he he showed that. And uh, Max Holloway though is just too dynamic for a lot of these guys to compete with and uh the body work was really on display um stupid bet for me bet uh chris gutierrez uh, for a live bet for 0.25 units after the first round um i figured after the knockdown and being on his back that in the second round he would really pick up his output and start putting it on munoz to win those win the next round and you know set up a debate for round three but he just had no output in this fight and just let it drift away. Um, next. Oh, also, I forgot to... I, I was going to bet Brandon Royval, like I said in our bet video. I felt nervous to pull the trigger and look how bad that turned around on me. But uh, anyway, moving down. Yeah. Um, Rafa Garcia um, dominated uh, Guida for, <laughs> for three rounds. And then uh, Gutierrez got dropped on the first and then had no output in second and third yeah that garcia line for a live odd and like the zach cummings line for a live odd had to be insane like not even 
something you could compete with because those guys were just beating their opponents up the whole time. Um, going down further, played the D- Dustin Jacoby as Matt Mercicano fight. You know, I sweated my ass off, but I did stick to my instincts on this fight, and it kind of played out pretty well. And this round two, though, was definitely very scary. <clears throat> and, yeah, especially uh, the, the last 10 seconds or whatever it was there. <clears throat> for having all that reach and size, man, Dustin Jacoby just doesn't use it well enough. Y- you know, Izzy always, like, pulls his head back out of range, and Dustin Jacoby just fucking keeps his head right on center line, ready to be hit. And uh, Merz kind of took a full advantage, but still hit that bet. Um, Bruno Brazil, I absolutely fucked the over two and a half in the Dennis Gomez fight. Dennis Gomez is very, uh, she's very good, very good hands, but Bruno Brazil looked like she'd never been punched in the face before for an MMA fighter um, and was just standing way too tall and uh, got knocked down pretty, knocked out pretty easily. Um, I said it about the Pedro Munez Chris Gutierrez fight. The over two and a half was going to be what happened. Um, sadly, just didn't parlay it with the right thing. And then finally, I entered the Laba versus Tanner Bozer. I could have just played the under one and a half because it would have easily hit, but I'm still happy with the under two and a half and the over two and a half in the Max Holloway fight. Any other highlights of the night? We picked, uh, we picked uh, Barboza right. We picked uh, Rival Roybell. right. We picked Jillian Robertson as an underdog. Well, she shifted to a favorite, but as an underdog. And then we picked Jocelyn Edwards in, in a close decision that she got the nod. So, yeah, Jillian or uh, Edwards by split decision is uh, how you got to play those. Yes, sir. Um, we got a bet video that will come out on Thursday for uh, the Pavlovich card. Um, and I'm just even pull this up right now. Um, like I said, two bets ahead of time. I got uh, <clears throat> Francis Marshall and Bobby Green, and then Montel Jackson and Bobby Green put together so far. So, um, any, love it. Anything else you got for this uh this breakdown? No, sir. All right, guys. Peace. Peace. I know, it doesn't matter from the trenches. I'm built like this. The old doubt to me I couldn't do it. The old said I couldn't do it. Look at me now.